Hello everyone, my name is Remy. I come from the Eat Staker community and the Steakhouse community and I'm here to show you how to do monitoring um, on your machine for an Ethereum validator. So this uh, video tutorial is going to be based on my guide which I wrote a few days ago and which I'm still writing. Um, I'll provide the link to the guide in the description so you guys can follow along and we'll go right away. So the first thing I'm going to look at here, here is uh, why you would want to do monitoring. So there's a few reasons why you would want to monitor your machine. Um, some of those I wrote in this guide here. The first one is information visibility. So you want to be able to expose and um, easily uh, see your machine details. Uh, the second one is issue tracking and debugging. So whenever something happened, you want to see how your machine reacted. Um, so if you have uh, monitoring, you'll be able to see what happened in the past. And the last one is issue prevention. Um, monitoring is pretty good if you want to uh, see potential resources, exhaustion ahead of time. Um, so you can prevent them and see how to resolve them before they uh, become a bigger problem. So this, uh, in this guide, we're going to um, install three tools, uh, uh, Prometheus, Node Exporter, and Grafana. Uh, Prometheus is an open source uh, system monitoring project. It does a bunch of stuff, but in our setup here, it's mainly going to um, pull the data around and store them in a the database to be provided. Uh, we'll go we're going to be using no Node Exporter, which is another open source project which expose your hardware and operating system metrics. And the third tool that we're going to use here is called Grafana. Um, Grafana is another nice project which um, is used to visualize your metrics. And so you can like create dashboards or use dashboards that people already created uh, to see uh, different charts and diagram to show um, all your machines information. So this is going to look like the small diagram you are seeing here. Um, so you are going to be connecting directly um, to Grafana using your browser. Uh, Grafana is going to query all your metrics which are going to be stored within Prometheus and then Prometheus is going to pull um, all the data from different um, services or applications or processes. Let's start with how this guide is uh, built. Um, we're going to be executing a bunch of commands and so if you've never executed any commands in a terminal, uh, the first thing you'll have to do is start a terminal. I already have my terminal here and so uh, that's where I can type any command I want. Um, you'll see that most of the commands starts with a dollar sign, but you don't have to input that dollar sign. And uh, a few commands uh, use the sudo command and you'll have to enter your password to execute those commands. Let's start by installing Node Exporter. Um, first of all, we'll create a user for Node Exporter. So let me just copy the command here and paste it here. So the user account for Node Exporter is, is created. Next, we'll have to install Node Exporter. I just updated this guide, so let me just refresh it here. All right, so the latest version of Node Exporter is now 1.2.2. And so, um, Let's just make sure that that's the case. I'm on the Prometheus download website where I can find Node Exporter. Let me just see that I have the right version here. Um, there it is. All right, so the latest version is this one, 1.2.2. And then I can download it with this command here. So let's download it. Once I'm 
uh, I'm done with downloading it. I'm gonna verify it's uh, SHA-256 checksum. Right, so I can see the, check, the checksum starts with 344BD. Let's make sure it's the same one that we have here. Seems like it is. If I want, if I just want to confirm, I can just copy it here and search it in my web page here. And it found the same match, the same checksum, which just give me a better guarantee that the the archive is actually the good one here. Now we'll extract it with this command. And we'll copy the, the binaries for a uh, node exporter into a uh, proper installed uh, location. So this first command is going to copy node exporter and the second one is going to change its ownership here. Um, I'm missing the sudo here. I was looking for this error message. All right. Now I can remove the download leftovers. So we are removing the extracted download and the actual archive. And then we'll create a systemd service um, to run a node exporter. All right. So the first step for creating this service is to um, create a new uh, service file. We'll do this by opening this new service file with nano, uh, which is a sample text editor. And then we'll just paste this uh, content that we have here. Just copy and paste it. And then all I have to do is uh, press Control X to exit. I'll be asked to save the buffer. I answer yes. Enter to confirm the file name. And then I'm done with the service file. Now all I have to do is restart, uh, reload the reload system D to, um, to make sure he, it knows about this new service that we just created. And then I can then start my new service and see if it works. So let me start it. And then let's check its status here. All right, so now I see that I have a running um, node exporter service. Um, we have some logs here. If I press right on my keyboard, I can see like a few logs that I have. It says listening on and I've got the address here. And it says TLS S TLS is disabled, which is fine. We don't need it. So what I'm looking for is a message that looks like this one, listening on and the address, which means it's actually working. Um, another thing that you could look for to make sure that your service is actually running properly. Um, like if you don't see active here, active and running in parentheses, um, you might have some issue there. Right, so if you have any issue, make sure to redo all those steps that we just did and you should be fine. Now, if I want to make sure that node exporter runs um, at boot time, um, I have to enable the service in systemd. So to enable it, I just have to enter this command here. And then whenever I restart my computer or my machine, uh, node exporter is going to start automatically there. All right, so that's pretty much it for Node Exporter. We already installed one of the three tools that we need. Now we'll install Prometheus. All right, so that's gonna be very similar. We'll start by creating the user for Prometheus. Um, in Prometheus case, we have to create a few directories where Prometheus is going to store its configuration and where it's going to store its data. Right, so let's create those directory and assign the proper ownership with the we, with the user we just created. So I'm creating the first directory, the second directory, 
I'm changing those permission to assign them to the user we just created. All right, now I'm all done with that. I can go and download the latest version of Prometheus, which I believe is 2.28.1. Let's make sure it is. I believe that's the case. Yeah, that's the latest stable release. Um, it seems like they are close to releasing 2.29, um, but it's not stable yet. So we'll just use the stable version here which is the one I have in my guide. Right, so let's download it. And we'll verify its checksum again, just like we did for Node Exporter. Make sure that the checksum that we have is the same one that we can see on the download website. Um, and then we can find it here with the archive we just downloaded which confirms that uh, the archive was not modified um, after it was published. Now let's tr extract the archive with this command. And then we'll copy um, the binaries to their proper location and set their ownership. So there's two binary that we need for Prometheus. And then we will change the ownership here. All right. There's a lot of uh, copy and paste here. You'll notice um, it's not too hard. Uh, just enter the proper command and should and you should be good to go. Now we have to copy uh, some file contents to their proper location. So let's do that as well. Just have to copy those commands to And then we have to set the proper ownership. There we go. Now we can remove the download left leftovers. With these two simple commands. All right, now we're at the point where we will set up the Prometheus configuration file nothing too hard here we'll open it with um nano our uh terminal command line editor and we'll just paste uh what we have here nothing special all right so there's a few of those configuration that will change later on but for now those should be fine um, one of the important section in this uh, configuration file is the scrape configs section. Right, so the scrape configs um, is a section where you can define the different jobs where Prometheus will um, pull data from other processes. In this case, we, are, we only have one job, which is called the node exporter, which is going to pull the data from uh, whatever is being exposed on node exporter. Right, so we can just press Control X um, and sorry, yes, when we want to save the modified buffer and press enter with the default file name that we already specified in this command here. Now we'll change the ownership of this new configuration file uh, to make sure it, it is being owned by the proper account. And finally, we'll test if we can start Prometheus to see if it works properly. So we can do that by uh, copying and pasting this command here. So what we see here, uh, we should see a, um, a message saying that the loading file, the configuration file was fully loaded. So this message here, and that's what we are expecting here. We're also expecting a message saying server is ready to receive web requests, meaning that uh, Prometheus works properly. All right, so that that is correct. Uh, 
Now I can press Ctrl C to exit this test run of Prometheus, and then we will create the um, actual service that's gonna run Prometheus here. Let's start by creating our new service file. And all we have to do is copy and paste this definition here. All right, let me see if that's the proper value. Seems to be fine. Yep. All right, as always with nano, just press Control X, answer yes, and press enter to confirm uh, that you want to save the file with the changes that you just uh, entered. Once we're done, we're going to do something similar that we did with node exporter. We're going to reload system D so that it can see our new service. And we're going to try starting Prometheus. If everything works, um, we should see an active and running service for Prometheus. Let's see if we have something like this. Um, so we can see here, the Prometheus service is loaded, it's active and running. And if we check the log by pressing uh, right on my keyboard here, we can see the same message here that says servers ready to receive web request, meaning that um, our server started properly and is ready to go. Now, just like we did with a node exporter, we're gonna enable the Prometheus service so that it can start automatically when the machine boots. So if we reboot the machine, Prometheus is gonna start automatically. All right, so we're already done with two of the three tools that we need. Now we're gonna install Grafana. Grafana um, has an APT uh, repository, may, uh, making it uh, a little easier to install. All we have to do is install some prerequisite. Um, and then we'll be able to add the uh, Grafana APT repository and uh, install Grafana from there. So first we have to um, add the uh, Grafana PGP key. Uh, GPG key actually and we have to add the uh, open source version of uh, Grafana uh, to our uh, repository list here and then we can update and easily install Grafana with the APT tool so I just updated my uh, repository cache and then I'm just gonna install Grafana there and that's pretty much it um, there's one last thing um, that I need to do with Grafana um, actually two things uh, the first one is change some of its uh, configuration so we're gonna start with that and the next one is gonna uh, be to actually enable and start the uh, Grafana server service. So let's start with the config. Um, I will open Grafana's configuration file here. And now I'm looking for this section in the configuration file. It's a, a section that starts with uh, server. So let's see here. I'm just pressing down on my keyboard and I just found the server section. Here I'm looking for a line that starts with uh, semicolon and HTTP underscore ADDR. And that line is right here. Now all I have to do is remove the semicolon um, and add a space after the equal and type localhost here so that the resulting server section should look like this one, which seems to be fine here. Once I'm done, like always, I type Control X, press Y, and then press Enter to confirm the, uh, that we wanna save the, the modified change that we just did. Now it's time to reload um, 
the to reload system D and to see if we can start Fana. Let's try it here. Now let's see what kind of status that we have with the Grafana service. All right, we can see the Grafana uh, service is active and running. It seems to be working properly. Let's check the logs here. I'm pressing right on my keyboard to see the rightmost part of the log entries. And we have a message that looks like HTTP server listen. Um, and with an address here, which means that the Grafana server managed to start and it's actually listening to the proper address here. Seems that our Grafana server um, started properly. Now we will enable it uh, to start uh, on boot, just like we did with um, Node Exporter and uh, Prometheus. So that's pretty much it for the uh, installation of uh, the three tools that we need for monitoring. Now, if we want to access Grafana, what we have to do is launch um, a browser from the machine that we're installing all those tools and go to this address here. Um, so it's localhost um, on the port 3000. Uh, so if you're not on your machine, if you're accessing your machine remotely, for instance with SSH, there's a few things that you might need to do in order to access your Grafana um, instance. Those um, those things might include creating an SSH tunnel. Uh, if you need to do that, the details are gonna be uh, found in the guide. But since I'm on the same machine as um, the one I'm installing those uh, monitoring tools, I can simply use the browser I have here and go to localhost on the port 3000. And I should have access to Grafana. Now, the first time you connect to Grafana, um, you'll have to use the default credentials, which are uh, username admin and password admin. So let me connect with those. And I'm being asked to create a new password, so I'll, I'll just create a new one. And there you go, I'm logged in into Grafana. Uh, nothing special here. So a default installation of Grafana does not include any dashboard. So we'll add, we'll add one, um, which is quite popular. It's the, the most popular one for node exporters called uh, node exporter full. It includes a bunch of uh, uh, of metric that are provided by Node Exporter. In order to do that, um, we have to click on the plus, we have to over the our mouse on the plus sign here to access the create menu and then click on import. Once we're there, we have to enter the code for that dashboard, which is 1860. And then uh, click load here. And then we'll see, um, a few thing, one which I, I didn't show yet is how to create your Prometheus data source, which I'm gonna do first, right? So I believe that's a, a step which is not there yet, but I'll show you how to do it. All right, so uh, before doing that, I'll, I'll go back here a little and I'll go into my data source, add a new data source. So I wanna make sure that Grafana can access our Prometheus instance and that it, it, that it knows about it. So I'm just gonna create on uh, Prometheus here. And the URL that I have to enter is actually the one that I see in the back here. So it's HTTP uh, column slash slash localhost uh, column 9090. And then once you're done, you can just create save and test and it should say data source is working. All right, I'm gonna have to change my guide, make sure that step is included in there as well. Um, 
But then once that's done, you can start importing your uh, dashboard. So let me go ahead and do that here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back into the plus sign here on the left uh, column menu to show the create menu and then select the import element, uh, type the uh, Grafana dashboard ID that we want to import here, which is 1860. I'm clicking load and then I have to select the proper Prometheus data source here, which is just called Prometheus. It's the default one. Now I click on the import. And then I can see the different details about my system here. Since I just started recording those uh, information, I don't have like a lot of data uh, being shown in this graph here because it's showing the last 24 hours. Uh, but I can try to show you guys like the last 15 minutes. So you can see this shows a little more data. Um, we can see our network traffic. We can see our CPU usage, we can see our memory usage. So there's a bunch of stuff that you'll be able to see uh, with this dashboard here. And if I scroll down here, um, you'll have a bunch of different sections that you can open by clicking on them to give you more detail about specific element. Like if you wanna see more detail about your storage file system, just click here and you'll see like how much uh, space you have available on your machine. Um, how many file descriptors your machine has, etc. So there's a bunch of stuff that you can can scroll down here to get more details. But the the main one, the main details you'll be able to find here, like the uptime. Um, so my machine was just booted recently, so you can see that the uptime is 1.1 hour. Uh, your swap usage, your file system, your RAM usage, etc. So there's a bunch of uh, good stuff that you'll be able to see here. which is what I'm explaining here. And so once, uh, when you're into uh, Grafana here, let me move my other tab here so I can explain it better. Um, so there's a bunch of things that you can change or modify or customize in Grafana, like all those panels that I'm seeing here, like they can be resized, they can be moved, they can be uh, remove you can add new ones if you want to you can remove like part of those like you see in this graph here um, there's like one two three four five six element that are being shown on the same graph like if you want to remove one of those you can remove it um, if you click here on view you can view a single panel but like larger um, temporarily if you want to see it better uh, so there's a bunch of stuff that you can do there. Um, you can change the um, the period uh, for which that I shown. Uh, by default, it was the last 24 hours, but like I just showed you, you can you can see the last 15 minutes, and it will automatically update every few often. The default um, refresh delay is one minute, but you can change it here too. And so, yeah, there's a lot of uh, personalization that you can um, do with Grafana. If you want to get more information about this, um, there's a nice uh, documentation section on the Grafana website that you can go to to learn more about all of those. So that's, uh, that's pretty much for how you can monitor your um, machines, uh, hardware, and uh, OS metrics. Um, but what you might be uh, looking for as well as um, monitoring your Ethereum clients, which uh, might be the main reason why you are here. Uh, so let's see how we can do that. Um, so if you want to add monitoring for your Ethereum clients, there's a usually three steps that you need to do. The first one is enabling uh, metric collection and reporting on your client. And that is usually done by um, adding a few flags uh, when you start your client. So we'll see how to do that with Geth and Lighthouse. Um, if you have uh, different clients, uh, eventually I will add those uh, sections there as well. 
Uh, the second step is configuring uh, Prometheus to pull the metrics from your clients, right? So just like we added a, um, a section, uh, just like we added a job in the scrape uh, config section of the Prometheus configuration file to pull the data, the data from Node Explorer, uh, we'll add a similar section to pull the data for each of our client. And then the last step is to import a new dashboard in Grafana to display those metrics. Right? So there's many public dashboards and there's a few like less known dashboards. Sometimes it's a little hard to find exactly what you're looking for but um, eventually I'll try to provide uh, good dashboards here for each of the major uh, clients. So let's see how we can do that with the GEF. Right, so let's start with GEF. So the first thing that we want to do um, with GEF uh, uh, to make sure it is collecting and reporting its metric is to add those uh, flags when starting GEF, right? So those flags should already be included into my uh, GEF service. So if I type uh, sudo systemctl uh, calf get.service, that's my GEF service, depending on how you install GEF, how you configured it, maybe you have a different uh, service or way to start it. Um, but you'll see here, there's a line called exec start equal and that's the command line arguments that are passed to GEF when it's starting. And so if I press right on my keyboard, I can see the remaining parts which were hidden because the line is quite long. Uh, you can see here I have the proper flags um, already uh, when starting GEF uh, to make sure it is collecting and reporting its metric. Next, I have to add a new job into my um, Prometheus config file, so I'll do that right away. So let me open it again, right here. So if you guys remember, uh, we pasted this default configuration file for um, Prometheus, and, and now we'll add a new job into the scrape uh, configs section here. So the job that we have to add is uh, one similar to this one. So I'll just copy it and paste it here. So this job is gonna be named GEF. Um, it's gonna pull from this path and it's gonna try to connect this URL or this interface and this port uh, to get those metrics every few often, right? And so this should be the default value for GEF and it should work in uh, most cases unless you change the default port or the interface. Now once I'm done here, all I have to do is press Control X as always when opening a file with Nano. I press Y, Enter to confirm the um, save of the file. Now all I have to do is reload the Prometheus service. And then just to be um, sure that it reloaded the configuration file correctly. I can check the log. Uh, this will show me the last six line of the logs. And you can see here, it says reloaded Prometheus correctly, but what I'm looking for is a line that says completed loading of the configuration file. Right. So that's, that means it worked. And then now um, Prometheus will uh, periodically pull the data from GEF. Uh, if I want to see that data, I have to import a dashboard, right? So there's no good dashboard for GEF yet. Um, I'm trying to build one which works uh, well with Prometheus and which can display uh, the data properly. I've got one here in my guys. I'm just gonna open it. I'm gonna select it all, copy it. Now if I wanna add a new dashboard, I can still go here in the plus sign menu, click on import. Uh, let me save this dashboard that I just modified first. And then I paste it here, click on load, and click import. Now we'll be able to see uh, 
some detail about um, our GEF process and our GEF client. Um, so in memory, I can see how much memory GEF is using. In disk, I can see how much uh, bandwidth GEF is using on my disk. On CPU, I can see I can see a bunch of different different information. In peers here, I can see how many peers GEF is using currently. It shows the last one hour, but let me show the last 15 minutes. So since I just added uh, GEF uh, into Prometheus, um, like I won't have much um, information about my GEF uh, client because I just started pulling the data from, like I just started pulling the metrics from GEF, but eventually I'll be able to, to have more data and this is gonna show like a bigger graph of what happened in the past, right? So there's a bunch of other sections that you can see here. Like um, I'm running a validator on the Prater network. So GEF is running on the Gurley network. And I can see that my chain head is uh, 5291135. So let me check on uh, gurley.headerscan.io if this is, yeah, this seems to be like, this seems to be close to the head on header scan as well. Like it, uh, it seems like I'm two blocks behind, but maybe it's because I'm just not refreshed here. You see, I'm, uh, I'm already on 38. And like, there's a few, there's some delay here, but yeah, you can see that I'm close to the actual head that's reported on header scan here for the girly network. So that can be used to monitor your um, get client. So let's keep up. Let's keep adding the metrics for another client. In this case, Lighthouse. Um, so the first thing I have to make sure is um, that I have those flags when starting my uh, Lighthouse beacon node. Um, just to make sure that I have those. Let's see what I have when I check my lighthouse uh, service, lighthouse beacon node service. Um, so I got, I got the correct flag here. The correct flags that I need is validator-monitor-auto and uh, metrics, All right? So I have those flags which means that I can use, um, which means that li the Lighthouse Beacon node will collect and report the metrics for the Beacon node and my uh, validators, right? Now I have to configure uh, Prometheus to pull the metrics from the Lighthouse Beacon node. And the first part is that I have to open the Prometheus config file. Let's do that here. And I have to add another job into the script configs section. So let me go at the end here and let me paste this one here. There you go. Now by default, um, the beacon node is going to uh, listen to the 5054 port to uh, report its metric. And that's pretty much all I have to do for Prometheus. Now let me save the config file again and rest, uh, reload the Prometheus service. That's pretty much it. Now just to make sure that Prometheus uh, was able to reload the new configuration file, let me check the last few um, message here from the Prometheus service. And I've got this message here, reloaded Prometheus. And what I'm looking for is this message here, completed loading of configuration file, which means it was able to load our new configuration configuration file properly. If you um, mistype something into the configuration file, uh, you would have seen a different message here. Um, maybe something else I would say, uh, mistake or error in the configuration file, please check it out, right? Something like that. Now, um, now that I have Prometheus pulling the metrics from my uh, Lighthouse beacon node, I can import 
the summary dashboard for Prometheus and the validator monitor uh, dashboard for Prometheus. So there's like two different dashboards that are useful for the Lighthouse beacon node here that I'm going to use. All right, so let's start with the first one. So this is this one here. So as always, when I want to import a new dashboard, I go in the plus menu here, click on the import. I can save my recent change to the uh, the GIF dashboard here. Um, I paste my JSON value here, click on load. Um, make sure I select the proper data source and uh, the default name for the Lighthouse uh, Summary Dashboard is just Summary, but I'm just going to add Lighthouse in front of it so I can have a better name, uh, a better way to identify it. I'm going to click Import, and I'm going to see here the different metrics for my Lighthouse Beacon node. Uh, this one here should be like the Validator Count, which I'm not very interested in. Uh, this is active validators. Uh, maybe I should try to make this bigger so we can get a better view of the different values that we can see here. I've got the memory usage, the the average load, the resident memory. So there's a bunch of uh, graph and stat that you can find out here about your beacon node. So that's my beacon node, but what I'm more interested about is my actual validator. So there's another dashboard for that. So let's import it. Import, I'm going to save the recent change to that dashboard. I'm going to paste my dashboard here. This is going to be the Lighthouse Validator Monitor dashboard. So let me see, it tells me that I have one active validator, which is the case. It shows the balance of that validator, which is in gray, which is a little hard to read. But maybe you could modify this panel here to make it easier to read. Like if you don't want to know, if you don't know, if you don't want to know it in gray, maybe you can change it to be in if like you don't, you don't need to see all those zeros here. And there's a few other metrics that you'll be able to see regarding like when your validator are tested, um, what's your inclusion distance, uh, and a bunch of other ones. So yeah, so that's pretty much it. There's a few security risks um, with such a setup and I I suggest you read on those um, and how to prevent them like there's nothing huge about about it but there's a few um, there's a few risks that you should know about and how to mitigate them especially about how to remotely access your dashboard if you don't have like a GUI on your machine uh, if you use the Ubuntu server, for instance, um, there's a few things there that you should be aware of. Um, if you want to keep going into this uh, this path or this uh, rabbit hole, um, I've got another guide which is about alerting, um, uh, which you can find out here. Um, it's it's very interesting to have some alerts when something might be wrong on your machine. And so this guide is going to help you uh, set up everything for getting alerts on your, uh, on your phone or by email or with whatever messaging you're using. Um, if you need more support about this guide or if you, need, if you have any questions or comments, you can um, ask the Eve Staker support. Um, we've got a great community which can help you with this. And part of this guide was based on a uh, summary stats guide. So thanks to Summer. Uh, Summer uh, wrote some great guide uh, for the Eve Staker community. And uh, this uh, wouldn't be possible without his uh, insight on all of this. So thanks everyone. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you learn 
um, and I hope you'll be able to add monitoring on your machine. Thanks.